So, you got yourself a mountain bike, you got yourself an action camera, and you got yourself a riding buddy, and you think to yourself, I know what'd be cool, I'll start a YouTube channel, and I'll film my exploits, and put them up for the world to see, and who knows, I could make it big time, and make this my career. What's the reality though? Is it all fun and games? Or is the bits that get on your nerves? So you've decided you want to start a channel. Now you've got to decide what sort of content you want to have. Do you want to be the sort of channel where you ride off onto a hill with a silly little stove and make yourself a delicious cup of coffee? Or do you want to be the type of channel who does all sorts of rad sick riding? And if it's the latter, are you capable of doing rad sick riding? After all, you don't want to look foolish to your peers when you put it up on YouTube, do you? And maybe where you ride is not all that good, but you want it to look good. So how do you get around these things and keep your channel interesting? Trick photography. So you decided to do riding videos and now on to the next issue getting the camera angle right and it might sound daft but point it too far down and all you see is the top tube in your knees that's not very good is it too far up and everybody can see up your nose that's not good either so you watch other channels and you think well i ride much better places than that and i've got a camera we've all got a camera why not start filming places like the lakes on wonderful trails That'll be interesting, that'll make for good content, people will watch that and then Covid comes along, a pandemic, we're all locked in our houses, what can you do? Well here's what you do, you ride past a load of scrapyards and junky places because you've got to keep the content up, you've got to keep publishing stuff because if you don't you'll slip into obscurity and who wants that? And then comes the next quandary. How much do you talk on your videos? Do you let the riding and the scenery do the talking for you? Or do you do commentary as well? Let's look at these two clips and see the difference. Oh, bit muddy. Bob. Bit of dog shit, flew up off his front tire, went to his mouth, went over the bars, and got the tip of his penis caught in his Dave's chain device. And if you decide to talk, what are you going to talk about? Are you just going to give a running commentary on the trail itself? Or are you going to think of subjects to talk about? Or random stuff, like I just did? Of course, it might be that you don't want to make riding videos at all. Maybe where you ride is just too dull. What other videos can you make and still keep with mountain biking? Well, there's always review videos or the much revered unboxing videos. Now the thing with an unboxing video is that to me it just seems to be the case of I've got something new, I've been given something new and I'm going to open it up and everybody is supposed to be really excited with what I have got. But for some reason they're really popular. Lion! Here it is folks, the big box. Let's do a box opening. What's going to be in this box? Well let me tell you, it's going to be sick. We're going to have a big reveal. I can't tell you how awesome it is to finally receive this. I've been waiting for days and days for this since I ordered it. Should we do the big reveal? Get ready. My God, this is going to be sick. It's going to be awesome. Are you ready? Let's get into the box. So you've got all the footage together and you've had to take a lot more than you expect to get something decent out of it. Now you need to compile all that together, chuck it into some editing software and make something of it. And editing is a real fun part. Now you could choose just to leave it as it is, but <laughs> the only person who's going to watch that is you. So into the editing suite and then the fun begins. Although it might look like we've been trying to polish a turd, 
Editing actually takes quite a while. You've got to line things up. You've got to put the clips in the right order. You've got to get the audio lined up and everything else. Any effects, I don't really bother, but you've got to get them in. And it takes ages. And you've got to watch it again and again and again and again until it's right and good to go. So the hard work's done. Your video is up. Now your attention turns to looking at YouTube Studio and such like. And it's a constant check on how many views has it got, how many likes, how many dislikes, how many comments has it got, and most importantly, how many subs have I got? Ah! Come on, you've been stuck like that for ages. Hey, three more! Boo! And it's hard to convey just how disappointing it is when they vanish again. Even though, you know, sometimes they're just going to come back because that's what YouTube does. It adds them, it then removes them, and then it adds them again. And talking of comments, you've got to keep on top of those. You've got to answer, you've got to engage with the people. What do I write? What do I do? Oh, well, I'll do the best I can. Hope it doesn't upset people. But of course, there are some people that are very upset, and you've got to deal with these freaks as well. Look at this one. <laughs> So you've decided that you want to grow your channel a little bit, you like doing this, you want to get word out there. Now there's a few ways you can do that. You can rely on the algorithms in YouTube, but you know, they're a tricky beast to get your head around. And you can go on various Facebook groups and start publicizing your channel and your content and hoping that people pick up on it and aren't just blatantly rude. Or you can move to the next level, which is merch. Have a merch drop. Get some stickers made up. Ooh, look at them. But the problem is, how do you get the stickers out? Do you advertise you got them and send them out, which will cost you money? Do you try and sell them for some bizarre reason? Or do you just hand them out to people? Here you go, mate. Would you like a sticker? What's this? Like a doodle, stuff a doodle do? What's well, this? it's like a chicken, but it's not. Why the fuck is this on my bike? Well, because it's my YouTube channel and it's support, isn't it? <laughs> I don't want to do that, you weird old man. <laughs> Your bike is crap, mister. So, you want to get the channel name out there. And merchandise, I think it's a good way of doing it. Because you make stickers, you make t-shirts, people wear it, other people see it all. And, yeah, it's a hassle because it costs money to get it done. And people might not buy it. But, everybody loves stickers, surely. Kids especially love it. Oh, oh, what the hell's this? Oh, well, that's just rude. The reality is, you never make any money from YouTube by filming mountain bike stuff. Not unless you're very good at it, or American, or Sam Pilgrim. Nope, you've got more chance of getting a lot of subscribers and actually making money if you do something like film yourself playing with kids' toys. Hey, Cinderella, how's it going? Hello, oh, not too good, Gary. Unfortunately, I'm suffering terrible chafing around the anus. You should get yourself to the doctor. You need to put some of this ointment on there twice a day. At the end of the day, you've got to make the decision whether it's worth it or not. You might love it. You might hate it. It might ruin your rides. It might break your rides because you faff around a lot. And there's a lot of faffing around afterwards as well, getting it all ready to go up. But there is an immense sense of satisfaction from it. And occasionally you'll get a comment that will make you feel really, really chuffed with yourself. And to me, that makes it worthwhile. So why not? What have you got to lose? Apart from time. Bye bye. <laughs>